The theme is manifestation for glorification. Manifestation for what? Glorification. We talked about godliness. Is that true? We dwelt on having a healthy conscience. And we said, you cannot live a godly life without a healthy conscience. However, if you have the fear of God, your conscience will be out of cause. So today we'll be looking at the fear of God. The fear of God is the sustainer of a healthy conscience. It is the beauty of Christianity. The fear of God is a key factor to living a righteous and holy life. What is fear of God? Fear of God is a deep seated reverence for God that causes men to want to please him at all costs. It is a wholesome respect for the person of the Lord Jesus and his authority. It is simply to avoid evil and embrace righteousness. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Yet this, the fear of God does not mean to be afraid of God. It does not mean phobia. It means to stand in awe of his persons. It is to reverence, honor, and respect his majesty, greatness, and faithfulness. That's what it means to fear him. The fear of God makes it to respond to God's commandment with great delight. Please understand that the whole duty of man is to fear God. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. When a man responds to his duty to fear God, he and his generation, even unborn, will be blessed. Yeah, this in Psalm 112, 1 to 3. It says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. A sea shall be mighty upon the earth, the origin of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. May these things that God has spoken begin to happen to us. So, wealth and riches are byproducts of the fear of the Lord. The fear of God does not demote people, it blesses people. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12, it says, And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. When you truly fear the Lord, you will recognize that he is our creator and we are he, the creatures. He is our father and we are his children. If the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Why is fear of God important? Why is the fear of God worth? Important. Can't I live my life without fearing God? Number one, it encourages righteous living. Fear of God encourages righteous living. The fear of God instills righteousness. Righteousness is having the right standing with God. It is a willingness to please God in what forms. 
Your willingness to please God, it once forms the foundation of your Christian life. And it was from the foundation for the fear of God. It is the ability to please God even when you are in the wrong environment. I pray from today, every one of us will walk in the fear of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 34, he said, I wake to righteousness and sin not. Righteousness makes you and I to live in the newness of life. You become eternally free from all unrighteousness. Righteousness was the reason for Job's lifting. Someone will be lifted after today. He became the greatest man in the land in these days. Through uprightness and godly fear. Practical righteousness is the pathway to honor. Joseph was honored after he passed the seducive thirst of Potiphar's wife. Why is righteousness important? Number two. It makes you possess a healthy conscience. The fear of God makes you what? Possess a healthy conscience. Your conscience comes alive when the fear of God is functional in your life. In Acts chapter 24 verse 16, it says, Yea, and do I decide myself to have always a conscience void of offense? Toward God and toward men. We said many have had their conscience snared with hot what? Iron. First Timothy 4 2. When you don't longer see evil as evil. Some see sin as normal. Evil is no longer called what? Evil. They call it weakness. You can only keep your conscience alive through the fear of God. The fear of God that makes a man, even when he makes mistakes, he say, God, I am. Otherwise, you will never see sin as sin. Number three, why the fear of God is important? You become content. ED. In addition to content, to be content, godliness to contentment, that's what I'm talking. Let me show you this. It will, it will baffle you. Turn with me to Proverbs 15, verse 16. Let's read together. One to go. Proverbs 15, 16. Better is little with the fear of the law than great treasure and trouble. Why will a Christian be involved in Yahoo? He has no fear. Many Christians get involved in all manner of dirty deeds. You agree with me? They even defraud inside the church their own brothers. Because he has no worth. He has no business. He tells you he has a business. If you supply, he will pay you. And when you supply, to get the money is a problem. They are caught in the web of financial corruption. You cannot differentiate them from sinners. The reason is no fear of God. And let me say this to you. When you are not satisfied with what you have, definitely you do things you're not supposed to do. They want to get something someone else has at all cost. And this lifestyle leads to covetousness. Leads to what? Until you are contented, you will remain covetous. Contentment is the answer to covetousness. Have you ever wanted something you cannot afford? It's covetousness. It's what? You don't have the money for it, yet you want it. It's what? Covetousness. You don't have it, yet you are desperate to. The money is not there, but you say you must. Get it. It's a spirit. It is called the God of gold. It's called what? Covetousness is a major ministry of the God of gold. Where you want to have something at all cost. 
in Luke 12, 15. Let's read together. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of what? For a man's life considered not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. The moment money is your determining factor of your mood, you are suffering, you have been enslaved by it. There are those, if they don't have money, you will know. They never get excited. And when they want it, they go all out for it. Let me say this to you as a child of God. Whatever you cannot afford is not good for you for now. Because God said, no good thing. So if you don't have it, don't kill yourself for it. They that seek the Lord shall not lack any. If you don't have it, please don't kill yourself. Know what? Otherwise, before you know it, you walk into confessionness. You want to buy something somebody else has. You don't have the money. Relax yourself. The hair you have, you have different grades. There are hair of 1 million, there are hair of 5,000, there are hair of 20,000, there's hair of 300,000. Just afford the one you can afford. Why do you have to now borrow and start missing church? Because you have to pay. And when they ask you, you even quarrel. Am I, am I the only one owing? Even Nigeria owes. <laughs> you hear somebody says like that, leave the person alone. He's ready for trouble. Even the country, Nigeria, so am I the first person to owe? I've never bought anything on credit. If I don't have it, leave it. I buy what I can afford. To buy on credit is not a sin, but it's a weight. Is it what? It's not a sin. It's a weight. When you remember that you will pay, it will give you a nightmare. Do you need all that? You will be free today. Yeah. Conversion is the biggest problem in today's society with young people. The biggest problem. They want to live in a house they can't afford the house rent. They want to buy clothes they cannot pay. Why will you buy clothes you have not the money to pay? Buy the one you can Bible said we can lend to nations, but we're not supposed to borrow. Read your Bible well. You can lend to what? There's people who should borrow from you, but you avoid borrowing. You see, if I don't borrow, how will I survive? Keep borrowing. Keep what? I tell you, many people that is borrowing that kill them. Are you hearing me now? And borrowing is a habit. When you start it, you may find it difficult to come out of it. It's conventional. Is it what? So we've been borrowed to buy a car. They borrow to borrow, borrow to buy clothes. Borrow to what? It's madness. It's what? Because there's a cloth for your size. Is that not true? They have, for Naristas in Nigeria, they have Hollandis, they have Abanaya. <laughs> they have what? And they have, if the Abanaya is uh, the one you can afford 1,000, buy the Abanaya and sew it well. Don't say, my mother said Hollandis. You buy Hollandis, you may land in Holland. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. I'm not with anybody. One time when this show started, a young boy brought shirts and said, Papa, take, you pay any time you like. I said, if I don't pay you, will you allow me to sleep? He said, no, any time I like. I said, I won't, I won't buy it. I don't have the money for it. And I never had the money for that time. The money I had was 100 naira for one, one white shirt. Not white shirt of new one, no. You know, the type they start, that if rain beat the shirt. <laughs> May you not enter on that rain, you'll be in trouble. So, I sent one of my staff, I said, go and buy five. They start with them, they put them in hunger. They don't send them again. They do like this. They see sell? Okay. The dress is like this. 
So I bought white, white five. And when it's five, nobody will know. Monday to Friday, one one. Then they wash it for Sunday service. One one day, one day, another. So five, one day, another five. Did anybody? What's my business? It's, and one suit, oh, you will know it's one suit, one black suit. So I wear the black, red tie, different trousers. The following day, I wear black and black. The next day, I change again, wear another one. You make it myself. You now see that a shirt. You see the kind of silky dress it wore. Hi. <laughs> As we are preaching now, you're not hearing the message. You say, Chai, if you see the kind of shirt that guy wore. Hi. So even when they are saying Jesus is Lord, they say shirt. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Dead kills quicko. I can tell you. Dead what? Do you know if there's a level you owe, you'll be moving like a madman on the street? When you remember that bank I sent you later, you'll be moving and be doing like this without knowing. You wake up 2 a.m. if you're a man, your wife will be sleeping, you'll be doing like this. Your wife says, What's happening? He said, Nothing. Is it you're calculating how the bank will come and carry the house you're sleeping? Please, everybody owe it, I command you free round. The Lord God of heaven rescue you from that indebtedness. And don't owe again. As God is setting you free, don't go back to it. Are you hearing me now? And 90% of us who owe is big eye. Big eye. You want to wear what somebody else is. You want to fit into the class of big girls with big hair. <laughs> Uh, I will tell you, if you wear chippers in coat, you will not make him a man. It is not what you wear that makes you. It is who you are. I repeat. It is not what you carry that makes you who you are. It is what is the content of you. A clerk is a clerk, no matter the big hair. A manager is a manager, no matter the small hair. If you go to a bank, who will you respect? The manager or the clerk? You first you ask, who is the manager of this bank? Even if she comes out with no week, he says, excuse me, man. If the clerk comes out with a big week, he says, madam, where is your manager? <laughs> so it is not what you carry on your body. It is who you are. So what makes you is not those things. If you have, where well, No sin. But if you don't have, don't borrow. Don't what? To go and buy. That's all I'm trying to say. So that you can live your life without stress. Number four. Hmm? Why the fear of God? It separates you from wrong association. It separates you from what? Wrong association. The fear of God is our spiritual compass in our relationship with people. In Proverbs 24, 21, it says, My son, fear thou the law and meddle not with them that are given to change. Anybody that finds it difficult to change, God says, don't meddle with him. The fear of God strengthens you against ungodly relationship and unhealthy companions. First Corinthians 5 verse 11. It says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, an idolater, an irrelevant, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, no, not to eat. Second Corinthians 6 verse 15. And what concord had Christ with Belial? What part had he that believeth with what? An infidel. The fear of God will make you to say no to friendship that does not please God. The association you keep will either make you or mar you. And I've said friendship is not by worth. So if somebody is not adding to your life, it's either, there are four things that happen to every friendship. Either the person is adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. Every friendship is either multiplying or subtracting or adding 
or divided. And that the person is dividing your life from everything that makes you great. The person is reducing you by subtracting from you. The person is multiplying you. Are you getting now? Every friendship, these four things must be involved. Watch out. Is this person multiplying something in my life? Is this person adding value to my life? Is this person subtracting even what I have? Or is this person dividing me from what God has called me to do? Every friendship has this four. How does it work? And then you, so you, you look at your friendship. What is this friendship adding? Is it adding any value to me? Some people don't have anything they're adding to you. They are VDPs, VIPs, and VNPs. There are three sets of people that come close to you. The VDPs, the VIPs, and the VNPs. The VDPs are the very draining people. They come to you, they talk, they drain everything inside you. After they leave, you are empty. They talk and talk and talk and talk. All the old talk has nothing. They drain you. They are the VDPs. The VNPs are the very needy people. Every day they come, they have a need. Find me something. Find me something. They are the VNPs. Then we have the VIPs, the very important people. But when they come, you don't, you don't want them to go. You want them to be around you. So decide whether you have a VNP, a VDP, or VIP. If it's a VDP, run away. If it's a VNP, run away. But if it's a VIP, keep the person. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, avoid VDPs. They train you. They, they train you. As they visit in the morning, somebody died in the village. <laughs> Brother, I came to tell you, somebody just died. Burial is on Saturday. I said I should come and inform you. You said that all? Yes. Oh, we don't know. That man has been sacked. I want to tell you. By the time they finish you, you are out. They are the VDPs. They are, they are around you. They can be your real blood brothers. So watch out if the person around you is what? VIP, VDP, VNP. Very needy people. Every time they need, brother, sister, find me 5,000. Find me 10,000. They never visit you without something. Any relationship where someone cannot say, how are you? You okay? It's not a good relationship. Every relationship that has to do with only when give me something, that is not a good... Sometimes call people not for anything. So I just want to find out how you're doing. Hope you're okay. Don't always relate to people only when you need something. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Otherwise, they will never respect you. Never respect you. Sometimes, let them be the ones to do it. Just, I just want to greet you, and I feel you. How are you doing? The person will ever respect you. I met an American. I said, what do you need in Africa? I said, you need something here. He was shocked. He said, what do you really need in the church? I said, you need something, because I have more money than you. What will I need from you? Where you need me? I said, I'm in the natural way, I'm always richer. Is it because you see me from Africa? It was cold. That's my life. Because everybody who meets them in America, they feel you have a need. They say, what can we do to help people? I say, you need me to help you. Even with your eyes, two of us who is richer. <laughs> I won't beg from him, so why would I not talk? After that, his nose became red. Why, why would you think that? Because I came from Africa and that I'm in need. Because the Africans have sold their birthright. Once they meet somebody from America, the first thing they do is say, find me something. And when they say, what do you need? They say, we need plenty of things. You know, our church, we need plenty of things. So they see an African preacher as a beggar. Please, when you travel next time, don't put yourself in that shoes. You are not a beggar. You're a child of destiny. Even when they ask you, say, I have no Carry yourself with dignity. That's why they keep looking at African leaders as beggars. Well, let's come back home. Some scriptural examples of those who lived in the fear of God. Is anybody in need? <laughs> Is it my God? Not man. Not man. Stop looking out to men to supply your needs. Some scriptural examples of those who lived in the fear 
of God. Number one example is Job. Is who? Job. Job 1 8, you will see God's word. And Lord said, As thou considered my servant, what? Job, that there's not like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed him. Even during his trials, Job maintained his reverence for God. The wife said, Insult God and die. He said, No way, I won't do that. I will maintain my integrity. Job 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Does that still retain the integrity? Cause God and what? He said, I won't do that. I fear God. He was a man and God lifted him. God will lift somebody as I'm talking. He was the greatest businessman. Job never defrauded. Listen, the secret of business success is not all the principles you know, it's, it's fear of God. If you're a businessman and you fear God and have conscience, you will succeed in business. You will sell fake things. Are you dancing now? Why will you sell fake drugs? Why will you say, if you have fear of God, you will never take somebody's money. If you say, give me 5,000, I'll sell you your goose. You sell the person the goose. But if you don't fear God, you can collect 5,000 and run away. Through? Businessmen, hear me. Just develop the fear of You will go down in business. It's not all these principles. Go to work early. Yeah, thank God for them. But if you put all the principles without the fear of God, you'll be a principality. If you put the principles with fear of God, you'll be a principal. The fear of God is secret. This is what? Because many businessmen have no fear of God. As they are signing contract with you, they are thinking of how they will dupe you. They say, yeah, let's sign. Bring the documents. They say, I'll finish this guy. <laughs> I asked an architect, I say, with all your skill, why are you not getting a job? I said, the problem is you have an integrity problem. Because an architect should not look for a job. It's like an accountant looking for a job in today's world. Any accountant looking for a job has no integrity. Because the world is looking for accountants. Looking for what? I met a young girl, I said, in this church we'll be announcing accountants. Why didn't you apply? She said she doesn't know. I said it's a lie. Every day we announce accountants. Accountants. So why didn't you apply? Because they know if they come to a church, they're afraid whether they will not do this. First qualification of an accountant is integrity. Second qualification is integrity. Third qualification is integrity. Not I can and ACCA. I can with the integrity you be the can. First qualification of an accountant is what? I better employ an average accountant with integrity than employ the man with I can with an integrity. Because someone like me, I don't ever look at offering. Never. Everybody who knows this church, I don't. I, I, if I tell somebody, you'll be shocked. Last Sunday offering, I don't know. I've never since this church started sat where they are counting money and say, I'm us. So the, any accountant in this church must be somebody with integrity. Because people walk in and give them cash. It's different from circular work. Circular work, nobody will give cash to you. But in a church, somebody can, you go to pick tithe, you can decide to just give somebody. It's accountant, please record this tithe for me. True? If he's a thief. $10,000 is 4.7 million. $100,000. <laughs> Is forty something million naira. Another thousand dollars is just like this. Now, if you give somebody who's a thief, that's small bag. He said, "Thank God for this money." <laughs> <laughs> so the first qualification is what? Second, third, he has to have conscience and if you are, if you don't steal, you will never steal. Please, all accountants hear me. Thank God for the icon you're writing. If you don't have integrity, don't apply anywhere. You are not an accountant. Any accountant with integrity is not an. If a security man goes to steal, you know why they jail them? He's been kept to watch over the place. So if he's involved in anything, judges don't play with such people. They jail them straight. An accountant who is involved in corruption. It's like a security officer in front of the finance. Now he's the one stealing the finance that is asked to watch over. So he should be go to jail. You know, an accountant is simply a watchman over what? Money. Now he if you come because the watchman becomes the thief. They will watch over the finance. They should jail him. In your company, don't say church. If I can't and steal. Come to EFCC. Come to what? 
Don't say church. No forgiveness for that one. Tell the officer to arrest him and jail him. He said, "Why not church? They, they, they talk like that." Did God say you should forgive people when they steal? Which Bible did you read that one? He used Koboko to flop people low. So sentence the person to jail. Don't say church. One day somebody did me something. They say, well, you forgive everything. I say, I forgive you, but I can't trust you. Trust is built. Forgiveness is instant. Forgiveness what? But trust is built. So you have betrayed my trust for tapering with money. I've forgiven you, but trust, I can't trust you. So I can't give you that office again. Number two. Are you there? <laughs> the second person is Joseph. Is who? Joseph. One of Joseph's credentials was that he feared what? God. Genesis 42 verse 18. And Joseph said unto them, the third day, do this and live for I fear God. He was sold to slavery, imprisoned, humiliated, yet the fear of God brought him to limelight. The fear of God made Pharaoh to hand over everything in the land of Egypt to Joseph. Genesis 41, 38 to 39. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. May someone, just like Joseph was lifted from the back, God will lift you. I said, God will lift you. I said, God will lift you. In the name of Jesus. I read a story sometime in business meeting of a bank owner. How many of you were in that business meeting? He owns one of the biggest banks in Nigeria. This man, how did he become a rich man? During the civil war in Nigeria, Alex Ekweme, the late vice president, handed over, this man was a young banker, and handed over money into his hands to keep. And civil war came, and he kept the money. After the civil war, he handed over everything given to him to Alex Equipe. Then when he wanted to open a bank, they frustrated him from trying to open the bank. Alex Equipe was in office, came to a church, and he ran after him. I read it verbatim. He ran after him. The wife held Alex Equipe's dress to turn. I saw the young man. He said, Ooh, how are you? I remember him that you are the banker. He said, this is what I want to do. I want to open my bank. Therefore, he said, bring the paper. Immediately, Alex Equipe signed his signature and told him to approve his bank. For integrity. For what? If he has eaten Equipe's money then, the day Equipe needed Equipe's help. He never knew Equipe would one day become a vice president. That's how I read the story. Young people, don't rush for this bad money. Hmm? Somebody give you money. When they are coming, he says, as I was going, Hamra has attacked me. <laughs> he said, Hamra, they kill you, no. What happened? Everything was intact. Only the money flew out of the motor. <laughs> but you got nothing. The Hamra was there pointing at you, yes. But they didn't shoot me. But the money, I don't know how the portfolio for the money ran away. Is that Christianity? No, no. People should trust you. I tell people if you have fault, have fault for yourself. Don't carry it to other people. Don't steal people's money. It's against ethics. Against what? To tamper with what does not belong to you. It's not good. Don't ever carry, even children, you're hearing me, don't ever carry what does not belong to you. Stealing. Joseph never took one thing from Potiphar's house. True? Somebody give you something. Don't touch it. Number three, Daniel. Number three, what? Daniel was another man that operated the fear of God. The fear of God made him not to defile himself with the king's food. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. When you fear God, you will not do what they are doing in the world. So here. Number four, 
Shidrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shidrach, Meshach, and what? The fear of God made them not to bow to the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar. Even in the face of death, Daniel chapter 3, they were promoted because they feared God. God will promote you. Don't because you want to be a commissioner, they give you a uniform. You now sign. No, now. That you're buying to idol. Don't because you want to give an appointment, they give you a form for a court. You now sign. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't what? Don't do that. They say, we will never bow to your God. If we perish, our God who is is able to save us. If they bring a form to you, say, get lost with your nonsense occulting form. I mean, I should sign a form because you want to make me a commissioner? That's Christianity. That's what? What shall it profit a man if he signs your form and lose his soul? You may make you a commissioner today, but you miss heaven. Today, Christians sign. They say, boy, you sign, no, no matter how, get the money after you settle the matter. Tongue speaking Christians. You don't have the fear. If you have the fear of God, tell them, get lost with your nonsense occultic form because you want to give me an appointment. Have you seen any intelligent occult man before? Not one. Anybody who serves Satan, they behave like Satan. You are a child of God, you behave like God. So those who are Satan, they behave like who? Well, the benefits. How many of you are blessed? Yes. Benefits of fear of God. What are the benefits? Because if you know the benefits, you will do it. You know why? When you know the benefits of a thing, your perception changes. What are the benefits of the fear of God? Because some people used to say, you know, the reason why I'm poor is because I fear God. It's a lie. It's a lie. The reason why you're poor is because you don't fear God. Do you know tampering with tight is lack of fear of God? Some of you God can't touch tight. People think that is uh, the reason why people touch tight not because things are tough, it's because they don't fear God. Is that not true? Because it's cost money, you are going to steal it. If you fear God, you won't touch tight. Believe me, it's no prayer point. You won't touch it. You just say, no, no, this is not my own. What stealing is simply taking what does not belong what? To you unlawfully. Is that not true? So when you tamper with tight, you are stealing. Stealing is stealing. And the person who steals from God is more genuine than the man who steals from myself. In fact, they shouldn't be clean. I'm robber. They should keep God robbers first. <laughs> Benefits of fear of God. Number one benefit is divine wisdom. Divine what? The fear of God is the beginning of what? So those who fear God are very wise. Psalm 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Proverbs 9 verse 10. The same scripture. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. So if you want to be wise, what do you do? Take everyone that fears God. They are very intelligent. They are very wise. Joseph, Daniel, Jesus, Paul. Everybody that fears God works in divine wisdom. They are very wise. May the wisdom of God answer to someone right now. No matter what you think, you can't match a man who walks in the wisdom of God. It guarantees lifting. It guarantees what? It's a core factor. Hear this for supernatural intelligence. When these people walk in wisdom, they are very what? They are very intelligent. I don't mean they pass exams just that way. They are very what? They, they profess solutions to the challenges of life. Every wise man, when you meet them, you will know. When they talk with you, the way they talk is different from the world that's talk. They reason at a very high level. They reason at a very, they, they are high power intelligent. It's not school, though. They, they think at the frequency. When you talk with them, you say, these people are not in this world. Their reasoning is too high. So what? Okay, look at Joseph. He came from a strange dimension which was surpassing in Egypt. The Egyptians were the chemical engineers and chemists. He never went to school. But when Pharaoh said, how do we solve this problem? He just smiled. He said, this is how you solve it. Do you like that kind of Christianity? Where your office, they said, um, we have a challenge. You just stay like this. 
He says, sir, one, two, three is the answer. Nobody would ever push you aside. From this day, may every one of us walk in that kind of wisdom. Yeah. Where and when the world the saying things are not working, you just say it is working. Number two benefit is prosperity. It's what? You'll be shocked that fear of God makes people to prosper. How many of you know that? <laughs> Psalm 1, 1, 2, 1 and 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. That delighted greatly in his what? He said, wealth and riches shall be where? So, when you fear God, you don't get broke. It does not demoth. It promotes. It does not impoverish. It enriches. It does not make you a pauper. The fear of God makes you prosper. Proverbs 22 verse 4, the B path. Hear what it says. Proverbs 22 verse 4, B. He said, the fear of the Lord are what? Leeches and horn and life. So when a man fears God, he can't be broke. So every broke man, there's somewhere you're not fearing God. It guarantees access to supernatural supplies. The fear of God produces no matter the economic what, challenges in your nation. You are enlisted to enjoy kingdom provisions when you maintain the life of your... Now, look at the man Job. He was supernaturally prosperous. True? He said, he feared God and he should what? Evil. And he was the wealthiest man in the world. All east. Job 1 and 3. Was the wealthiest man. The wealthiest man will emerge from now. It is fear that makes you to prosper. To what? But three benefit, your children will be great. Your children will be what? Psalm 112, 1 to 2. Blessed is it that I fear the Lord. That the light of the command, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. And the death of the earth shall be what? Blessed. So when you fear God, you are not afraid. Your children will be what? Great. Our children will be great wherever they are found. So your greatness is tied to your reverence to God. My fourth benefit, you are blessed with your generation. You are blessed with your what? You are blessed with your generation when you fear God. Based on that Psalm 112, where we read 1 and 2. And the generation of the other shall be what? Blessed from verse 1. The fifth benefit, you enjoy long life. You enjoy what? The fear of God makes you enjoy what? Long life. Proverbs 10, 27. It says, the fear of the Lord prolonged days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Proverbs 14, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of what? Life. So depart from the snares of death. You enjoy long life when you are walking the fear of God. So I hear. The sixth benefit of the fear of God is revelation of divine secrets. Revelation of what? Now, God is the custodian of what? All secrets. John 29 29. Is that true? The secret things belong to who? God. For those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Now, listen more carefully. When you fear God, He unveils divine secrets to you. He says, As it was in the days of my youth. When the secret of God was upon my what? Tabernacle, Job to 9 verse 4. It takes secrets to excel in life. Secrets in modern time can be likened to what we call ideas into this world. When the Bible says secrets, it's simply what? Ideas into this world. So God reveals deep ideas to you. Psalm 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Psalm 25 verse 14. It was the fear of God that connected Joseph to divine secrets that gave him answer to the challenges of the land. In the name of Jesus, the challenges of the land, somebody will get answers to how? Yeah. Someone will get answers now. Yeah. So fear of God, you, if you know the benefits, you just fear him. Number seven benefit, it builds confidence. It builds what? The fear of God builds confidence. The fear of God inspires confidence in the place of weakness. Proverbs 14 verse 26. Proverbs 14 verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong what? Confidence. When you fear God, you are not afraid. You are not what? Afraid. The eighth benefit, 
promotion and divine lifting. Fear of God brings what? Promotion and divine lifting. Hebrews 1 9. Thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even that God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness, the both what? The fellows. It promotes you and brings you up. You be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number nine, you possess uncommon knowledge. You possess what? Proverbs 1 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You possess a common what? Knowledge. When you fear God. There are too many. It brings honor, brings dignity. Now hear this. The fear of God remains the lifter of men. Engage in it from now and it will be a wonder to your world. Shout a better amen. amen. We said godliness. But you can't have godliness except you have a healthy conscience. And you can't walk in healthy conscience except you have the fear of God. When these three things are in place, then the anointing will not work. Even if they anoint you and you don't have these three things, the anointing will still be corrupted. Because Gehazi had the staff of Elisha but could not use it because he had no fear of God, he had no conscience, and he had no godliness. So it's not enough to Sunday to come ahead to say pour oil on my head. Oil without the fear of God, you may do bad things. When God gives you money, you kill people. You pray to destroy whatever is contending with your heart of reverence to God. Contending with your decision to fear God. Whatever it is that's contending, you say today, I command you to be destroyed. Anything contending with my heart to fear God, let that thing be destroyed. Go ahead and pray sincerely in the name of Jesus. Whatever is contending, my heart to fear God in the name of Jesus, let such be destroyed right now. I must walk in the fear of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Everything contending with my heart to fear you. I command it destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Second prayer point, you pray that the grace to fear God comes alive in you. Grace to do what? Comes alive in you. Go ahead, name of Jesus. Grace to fear God comes alive in us in the name of Jesus. Grace to fear God comes alive in us. Grace to fear God comes alive in us in the name of Jesus. Grace to fear God comes alive in us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Pray that all the benefits of the fear of God will manifest in your life as you walk in the fear of God. As you walk in the fear of God, that the benefits all will begin to find expression in your own life. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. So walk in the fear of God. Let all the benefits begin to manifest. In my life in the name of Jesus. As I walk in the fear of God, let all the benefits begin to manifest.
from this moment. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Because the person has wished you the best. May every seed you have sown to the life of that person reap the harvest now. For those who are at home alone, I decree the words who have declared not one will fail in your own lives. In the name of Jesus, whatever prophecy that went forth these three days, wherever you are in any part of the globe, receive your own portion in the name of Jesus. Nothing fails in your hands. Nothing dies around you. Enjoy peace. May this weekend be a weekend of progress. A weekend of testimonies. A weekend when possibilities will turn to possibilities. In the name of Jesus. Not one sick will remain sick. It is well with you. In Jesus mighty name.